Hey y'all, it's Amber. Welcome back to my channel. Whether you're a first time visitor, returning viewer, subscriber, welcome, welcome. I am happy to have you. You caught that hair swing? She's all that. <laughs> I am so excited to have you on today. Today I am going to have another book haul. You can see here my stack is kind of tall. It's like literally almost as tall as me sitting on the desk, of course. Uh, but anyway, if you like lifestyle content, book videos, teaching vlogs, things of that nature, then this is the channel for you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you click the notification bell so that you can be aware of every single time that I make a post. Also, I would love any comments, book recommendations, things of that nature. Feel free to leave me a comment and let's chat down below. And I would also love if you give this video a thumbs up as that will help out my channel. Now that I've given us all of that information, let's go ahead and get into this book haul. So before I get to the books that I got through Donors Choose, which I'll talk a little bit more about in just a second, I want to go through the books that I received from Book of the Month and then one book that I just bought separately, completely. Since this is the year of manifestations, I am manifesting. Don't know if it's going to be this year. Don't know if it's going to be next year. Don't know when it's going to be. But I am manifesting that book of the month is going to be a sponsor for me. It's going to happen. Anywho, so I'm going to start with the three books that I selected from book of the month. And then we will go from there. So to keep this video short... I'm not going to go into too great of detail about what these books are about, but I will try to give you as much information as quickly as possible. And if you see me looking down, it's just simply because I'm referencing some notes right here on my laptop. But for the most part, I want to try to give the camera my undivided attention um, and just explain what these books are about. So the first book that I have is What's Mine and Yours by Naima Coster. Coaster, sorry for the mispronunciation, but this book is about when a group of black students in North Carolina have to go to an all white high school. It just seems that all hell breaks loose. That in itself was enough for me, but you get to see two different perspectives and two different families and how they get to come together. I believe based on what I saw with some of the previous recommendations that this is sort of similar to what is it with the the white family and the back black family oh snap is it big little lies little fires everywhere the next book that i have is the push by ashley audrain and this is about a mama who has a brand new baby and she just feels like something is wrong with her baby everybody around her seems to think that there's nothing wrong with the child and that maybe there's something wrong with her so you have her going through this spiral of figuring out well is it is it my baby is it me like what's the problem you know am i the issue here so this is a thriller and i look forward to reading this as well i've been into thrillers lately i like mixing them in now i'm here for it i guess and then last but not least from book of the month i got the secret history by donna tart and my goodness i borrowed this book from the library and bought the got the paperback copy and it was not nearly this thick woo i do know that this is a dark academia book i believe a murder happens on a college campus and so it's like after the fact trying to go back and figure out the secret history could totally be wrong but i'll make sure to put some information down below those are the three books that i got from book of the month the next book that i got i bought completely independent so it's not books that i received in my donors shoes um project this is just a book that I bought separately and that is the four winds by Kristen Hanna and I started reading this book already with the library and I'm so upset because I put the book back in the library drop box and it had my little women bookmark and I got that bookmark because of um the little puffin and bloom set that I bought I'm so sad I really love that little bookmark it had the little cute quote and everything I'm so sad I'm so sad anywho hi so I started reading The Four Winds and this is essentially about a woman moving to the West Coast during the Great Depression. During the Great Depression, she's living in a part of Texas where they experienced the Dust Bowl. You know, you had these big, really big dust storms that would come and destroy homes and, and crops and things of that nature. So she ends up getting herself into a little, little situation. So she marries this man and so we get to see what happened, how her world was able to change as a result. Um, this is the author of The Nightingale and The Great Alone. I have both of those books. I have yet to read both of those books. But like I said, I have started this one and I am going to continue reading it until I finish. So I look forward to finishing this up and giving more information about what I think 
about this book. Now, we are going to go ahead and get to the books that I got from Donors Choose. And I am going to leave a little bit of information about Donors Choose linked down below. I'm also going to leave links to several independent bookstores. And I am also going to uh, make sure to leave my Donors Choose link just in case you're feeling generous and want to donate to a project. I always have a project up. I'm always looking to provide things for my students to enhance their educational experiences. Um, so I will leave all of that information for you down below. But essentially, Donors Choose is a platform for educators like myself to use where we are able to essentially it's like GoFundMe, but for teachers. So you're able to post these projects. It could be for resources. It could be for books. In my case, it could be supplies, prizes, virtual field trips, you know, special guest speakers, professional development opportunities. So it doesn't necessarily have to just relate to students only. You can seek projects for professional development opportunities and things of that nature. Just based on my experience, it seems like it's easier to get things for students than it is to get things for teachers. I have had a couple of teachers projects funded, so it doesn't mean that it's impossible. It's just a little more difficult. So like I said, I will leave all of that information about Donor's Shoes down below. Let's get into these Donor's Shoes books. The first book that I have is Democracy in Black, How Race Still Enslaves the American Soul by Eddie S. Glaude Jr. And I got this book because I have been looking one to build my collection of black authors essentially but i've also been looking for books that helps me to kind of understand the society that i'm living in help me to understand different perspectives anyway there are various books that i still want to read that speaks about race here in america and having those difficult conversations um and this book just because of the title caught my attention and it talks about some of the the, the things that pertains to sorry the trayvon martin case the black lives matter movement um, how there seems to be a value gap between black and white people here in America, some of the discrepancies with and the problem with the democracy um, of America. So I'm excited to read this book. This is probably going to be a summer read and I look forward to having it in my classroom as well. The next book that I have is Black Brother, Black Brother by Jewel Parker Rhodes. And she is the author of Ghost Boys. I have that story right here behind me. Where is Ghost Boys? Where are you? Here we go. I'm about to say, I knew it was literally right here behind me. I have Ghost Boys behind me. I haven't read it yet, but I did have students who were previously able to read Ghost Boys before, which is why it has my little classroom label. In this book, we have the main character whose name is Dante. Um, he is one of a few. At his school, he does have a lighter skinned brother. And so because of his skin, uh, his skin tone, a lot of the students at the school will call him black brother, black brother. They wanted him to be more like his light skinned brother, Trey. So he ends up finding himself joining a youth community center because he is trying to find a place where he can fit in, where he can be comfortable in his own skin. So he learns from a great with fencing and his story goes from there. This just seems like a cute, good read. It seems like it's going to be a middle grade book just based because on the 12th, the, I can't talk today, but just based on the character being 12 years old, it just seems to me like based on his storyline and his plot, this is going to be a middle grade book which is perfectly fine because I teach, teach eighth grade English. Can't talk today. Um, so I do look forward to reading this book as well. This is probably going to be another summer read for me. The next book that I have is The Divines by Ellie Eaton. And I've talked about this book before. I believe it has made my way into, it made its way into one of the vlogs. And I checked it out from the library twice, actually. <laughs> Still didn't get to it. I just dropped it back off again today. But this is essentially talking about an elite English boarding school. We have these girls here and we meet them years later. So there's a great big scandal that takes place at this English boarding school. So the main character comes back as a grown woman in her 30s. And so she's kind of like reconnecting to her teenage self and her teenage years. And in the meantime, it's kind of uncovering some of those dark secrets of that school before it closed. So this seems like this is probably going to be more of a YA novel and I will definitely be reading this before I put it in my classroom um, and we'll make sure to separate that if I'm coming back teaching English next year. So this is The Divines by Ellie Eden. The next book that I have, wow, this is a book that I both dread and cannot wait to read and that is Roots by Alex Haley. Now, Alex Haley is most known for this book in particular. He is also known for being the co-writer, co-author of the autobiography of Malcolm X. And there's another book as well that I'm not able to think of at this time. 
But we get to follow the story of Kunta Kente um, and a lot of things from Roots. They made it a television series and I was able to watch it in sixth grade social studies, if I'm not mistaken. And it just talks about his experience here as an American slave, him wanting to retrace his ancestry back to Africa. And so the main character in figuring out more about his history and tracing it back to Africa, he's trying to figure out, you know, he's torn between these two worlds. And I, I definitely can relate now that I'm reading this. Also, this is Alex Haley's actual story. Now that is interesting. Like I said, I watched Roots in sixth grade, different, you know, bits and pieces. So I didn't realize that this was his actual story. Now this, this is going to definitely be bumped up on my TBR list. And maybe this is going to be a book that I read over spring break. I have just, and I still need to record that video. And maybe that's something that I'll do later this afternoon or next or whatever the case may be. But I actually just took up an interest in tracing my ancestors. And I too was able to trace one line of my family, my maternal grandfather i was able to trace his family all the way back to the slave owning roots and i kind of i stopped from there um because once it became all white and the slave owners at that point i didn't want to know any more about it i want to connect to you know more um, i want to be able to trace more about my maternal grandmother's side of the family as well as my paternal side of the family and i'll talk more about that in that video when i share some of the results and the names and the information that i was able to piece together and come up with but i definitely can relate to roots i'm also looking forward to going to a trip in ghana west africa later on this year and i want to find out more about where i come from where my my people come from my ancestors and i do know my maternal grandmother is actually biracial her father is actually a full-blown native american and her mother is black or my paternal grandmother she is also biracial she is half white half black um so it was really difficult to find a lot of information about her i didn't actually find that out until after her funeral um, because I literally asked like everybody on my grandma's side of the family is darker skin. So why is it that she and all of her children are very, very pale? And that's why. Anyway, so it seems that I can really identify with Ruth as of now. And so this, like I said, it's definitely going to be bumped up on my TBR list. And I look forward to actually reading it as well. Next, I have The Awakening of Malcolm X. A novel by Ilyasa Shabazz and Tiffany D. Jackson. Now, Tiffany D. Jackson is the author of Grown, Monday's Not Coming. What is this other one? Allegedly, they're all behind me, <laughs> funny enough. Ilyasa Shabazz is Malcolm X's daughter. I believe she's like one of the middle girls, if I'm not mistaken. And, oh, okay, I get it. So it seems like this is actually the continuation of X. So X is book written by Ilyasa Shabazz and Keekla Magoon, and it focuses on the childhood of Malcolm X all the way to his prison sentence. And it seems like this book is actually picking up from his prison sentence to his adulthood. Aha, now this makes sense. I finished the other one at the start of this, the new year. So I am greatly looking forward to reading this book now that I know that this picks up where the other book X leaves off love that love that next book that i have is a memoir from ta coates adopted for young adults and that is the beautiful struggle now ta coates is known for several of his books he is known for the water dancer he is known for oh what is the name of that other book ew i can't remember oh the beautiful struggle we were eight years in power between the world and me is the book that i was actually thinking of between the world and me um, I was able to actually read that. I do have The Water Dancer. I haven't been able to read it just yet. But I look forward to reading more about ta -Nehisi Coates. Even just down to figuring out how he got the name ta -Nehisi. It's not a usual name. But I love it. So he talks about how his father was a Vietnam vet. He was actually a Black Panther as well. So we get to see some of the perspective of why ta -Nehisi Coates writes the way he writes with how he came to believe the things that he believed he i do know he is a prominent black author and a prominent black voice so i look forward to reading this book as well next i have the three mothers how the mothers of martin luther king jr malcolm x and james baldwin shaped a nation so we typically talk about those individuals and how they were able to provoke a change we know dr king is and malcolm x were one of the leading 
two of the leading voices essentially of the civil rights movement james baldwin was as well he is known for being a famous author he um, ended up moving to paris you know i think he was actually in paris during the assassination of malcolm x at Megar evers dr king and i i really have gotten into james baldwin's works i wasn't really too familiar with a lot of his writing like i've heard of his books but i wasn't really familiar with him himself as an author but i've been able to read a couple of his books i've been buying up his collection as well as tony morrison some other prominent authors um that were a little before my time a lot of but a little before my time um anyway so i am curious to hear more about the mothers who were able to raise these gentlemen to grow up and have such powerful voices. I look forward to hearing about these three strong, brilliant mamas. Next book that I have is By the Book, a novel of pros and cons. Ha 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 ha. I see what they did there. I see what they did there. So instead of pros, P-R-O-S and cons, they did pros like literary element. Pros with an E and cons. You know, teacher humor, <laughs> literary humor. And by, this is by Amanda, Amanda Sellett. So we have this main character who is a reader by trade. She's a lover of reader. I can definitely relate. Based on the books that she read and the heroines and the female characters that she looks up to, she creates this, this guide, if you will, of how to not fall in love with bad boys, how to spot the red flags, how to, you know, go in the opposite direction based on what she's read. She's like a walking encyclopedia is what the description says about her, literally. So, of course, she's going to meet said bad boy. And I just wonder why everybody automatically assumes that bad boys just have to be in leather jackets. So she's going to herself try to see if she can follow her own advice based on how she's looking at him and how he's looking at her on this cover. I don't think it's going to happen, but I look forward to it. This is probably definitely going to be a summer read. And I even love the back, how you have this group of girls. And I'm just going to make a safe assumption that maybe those are her friends could totally be completely unrelated. I don't know, but I look forward to finding out. The next one that I have is by Monica Hesse, and I do have books of hers already. And that, do I have this book? Oh, okay. No, I don't. All right. Whew. I'm about to say, wait a minute. So I do have two other Monica Hesse books. I do have The Girl in the Blue Coat, and I also have The War Outside. They are right here on my bookshelf behind me. But this is her other novel, They Went Left. Now, based on my understanding of her novels, we get different perspectives that have been dealing with World War II. And it seems like this is going to be another one. Let's see. This is the version I have dreams of sometimes. Clear as day, sharp as a needle, so I can see every hair on his head. And when I have dreams of this scene, a beck nods at my promise, like he trusts me, like he believes me. For a moment, I feel at peace, but then something changes. So what is this about? Ha ha. Okay. This is, this is a lot. So it seems like in Germany, 1945, you have soldiers that freeze a concentration camp called Cro Gross Rosen. But before she was liberated, she remembers how her and her younger brother were the only members of their family to be speared from the gas chambers at Auschwitz-Birkenau. Birkenau? Birkenau. I have a really hard time pronouncing that correctly. Um, but her grandmother, her parents, her aunt, they all went left, which means straight to the gas chambers. Um, so she promised her brother as last words that they would find each other again. And it seems like the more she looks for her brother, the more impossible it seems to be able to reconnect and find him as a sister with a brother. Like I totally um, am bought in already. I haven't even started reading it, but um, I know the relationship that I have with my brother. And I know that, you know, if I didn't know where he was or if we had been split up for whatever the case may be, and my brother and I haven't lived together for years. Okay. But I can kind of connect because I am a girl that has an older brother. Um, anywho, I look forward to reading this as well as The Girl in the Blue Coat and The War Outside. So this is They Went Left. Next, I have The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. There's a ceremony that the 16-year-old Decca has to go through and it's a blood ceremony. She finds out that she actually has gold blood, um, which means it's like impure in their culture, which means that she's also going to have to face a consequence that's a lot worse than death. 
a strange woman comes and offer her an option or a different perspective and so she recognizes that even though that is going to be a tough and dangerous potentially fatally dangerous journey um she decides to go that way anyway so okay this is a fantasy novel and we get to focus on how a heroine fights to save a world that would try to tame her hold her back and she discovers that she is her own fiercest weapon and fantasy is not even my judge but i'm bought in i'm sold <laughs> i'm interested Next book that I have is Aftershocks by Nadia Owusu. This is the winner of a Whiting Award and this is a memoir and she's talking about her experiences of growing up in different places. She grew up in, um, well, she lived in Europe, Africa, America, New York, different places. Well, New York is in America, but y'all get what I'm saying. Um, anyway, so I look forward to reading this. I did borrow this from the library. I actually never actually got to start reading it, but it seems to me like this is going to be focusing on identity and how she was able to discover who she was and, you know, all that goes along with our identity as she grew up and got older and lived in these different places and areas. So I look forward to reading this book. And then last but not least, I have Claudette Colvin, Twice Toward Justice by Philip Hoos. And what a lot of people don't give Claudette Colvin for, she's actually the first person to refuse to give up her seat um, on the bus. So before Rosa Parks did it, Claudette Colvin did it. However, because Claudette Colvin was a pregnant teenager at the time, a lot of the civil rights leaders didn't think that that would be um, a good fit for her to be the face essentially of the civil rights movement. Rosa Parks was older, married more established so they went with that uh, but claudette colvin was still able to make a difference and we still talk about her um, today so i look forward to reading this and i also look forward to putting this in my classroom because claudette colvin is actually a person that we do um a project over during our malcolm x unit and this will be a great supplemental text for students who decide to pick her during that time so that is all those are all of the books that i received from my book haul this time from donor shoes thank you so much to donor shoes and to the companies who donated to my projects to make that happen like i said i will leave the link down below and the information to that um i also am grateful to book of the month for allowing authors of color and minority authors um and i hate using the word minority because it implies a sort of inferiority, right? Uh, but I appreciate the diversity that Book of the Month offers. And so for that reason, and because I just, it's a steal of a deal, um, I am going to continue to support and I look forward to the day that they actually sponsor my videos. So with that being said, if you hung on this long, thank you so much and I will see you next time.